And so, uh, Map 2400, Lecture 5, Discrete Random Variables. Uh, last time I defined random variable and it's a function x from sample spaces to r such that x inverse of a certain type of uh, sets in r, subsets of r, is an event in s, specifically this time. Now, I explained last time and I said uh, x inverse of u is denoted by x belonging to u. This is just a notation. And specifically this type of uh, subset of R, which is a closed, this is the closed set, one side. Uh, this is denoted by x less than equal to x. Now we will be dealing with uh, things like this. So another one will be x inverse of say if I have a comma b, uh, that is uh, we say that x less than equal to b bigger than a. Okay. I know x is a function, but this is just a notation. We are using this notation to... But this notation makes a lot of sense, and we will see uh, in a moment. Okay, so... Now, the random variables uh, come in two types. In fact, there are more than two, but we deal with two of them here. One is discrete random variable. Well, first of all, let me denote this by R V, okay, for random variable. Discrete R V, and that is the image of X is a discrete. subset of R and continuous random variable is when the image is Now, when we say it's not a discrete subset, it uh, includes many, many, I mean, broad range, but we mostly mean that the image is like an interval of some sort. Okay. Go ahead. Now, I start with uh, perhaps the building block of all uh, random variables, not all most random variables, say, and that is the Bernoulli random variable. So let me erase all these things and start with Bernoulli random variable. Now, Bernoulli random variable is this. So, this is a S, and I don't care what that is, uh, and X Bernoulli random variable, and in R, X takes just two values. So, X takes two values. So, either 
zero and one or negative one and one. Depending on the situation, we go with one of them. So let's take this one. Zero and one. So x takes zero and one, which means image of x is only zero and one. Okay, so part of this is sample space goes to zero and the other part goes to one. Uh, one uh, well, let me give you an example of this uh, before I discuss uh, uh, before I go further. So let me uh, erase this thing. So suppose you play something in a casino and uh, whatever you play, uh, there are two two things can happen. Either you win or you lose, right? Let's suppose these are the, the only two things that can, can, uh, that can happen. Okay, so uh, you are playing, what? say, blackjack, you are playing something. So your sample space is like the game that you play and uh, Each one of them has a probability of happening, right? So if you are playing blackjack, you might say what's the probability of uh, this uh, this thing happening. Uh, what, whatever that is, what, uh, this X takes these games, these are like games, played, let's say, or into two categories, either you win or lose. So lose is zero and this is one, right? So either you lose or you win, and that is uh, lose is zero, win is one. Or you can say it is uh, success, one, failure, zero, okay? So as you see this, uh, Bernoulli random variable happens a lot and you have dealt with this a lot in, in your life but not in this context or not uh, given to you in this form. So wherever we have, uh, we are doing something, playing a game or something that has uh, uh, just two outcomes, either you have, uh, either you're successful or you fail or you win or lose then you can uh, relate that to Bernoulli and the variable. Now, what we need here is uh, probability. So, uh, probability that x is 1 is a probability of success. So, we need two probabilities here uh, where should we write this thing? So, we need probability of success and probability of failure. So let's call this P, and since we have just two, one minus P, right? And this is in fact P of X equals one. This is P of X equals zero. So you see that's how we uh, write it. Remember, remember that X equals zero doesn't mean anything in uh, like uh, if you just deal with functions, say what, what does it mean, f equals zero, unless you define it carefully and say what it is. Well, in fact, that is x inverse of just a, a set that includes zero. Well, well anyway, so uh, these are the two things that we need for a Bernoulli random variable, and uh, the way that we denote Bernoulli is this. So we say that x is Bernoulli with probability of success in P and we write it like this X tilde Bernoulli 
in the parenthesis q. Okay? So we write it x is Bernoulli with in parenthesis p. And uh, so it means that the distribution is uh, Bernoulli and uh, uh, the probability of success for that distribution is p. Okay. This is called parameter. We will see parameters a lot. Uh, and this is the distribution. Distribution is name. So if I have normal distribution, I will write normal, for example, and uh, in parentheses or just n. And in parentheses, I will write uh, uh, the two characteristics of a normal distribution, which is mu and sigma squared. We will see that in continuous random variable. So, okay. So, so whenever you see uh, something, a game playing. Uh, some phenomena that has uh, two, uh, say in a sense, two outcomes, and uh, uh, either it's successful or it is a, uh, a failure, then we can relate it to a Bernoulli random variable. <sighs> okay. And uh, three two. For discrete random variables, we have something which we call uh, uh, probability mass function, or related to. Okay, so probability mass function, and that's very simple since we have discrete. So x being my R V, x takes say a one, a two up to say a n. Okay, which means that x can be a one, x can be a two, up to x can be a n, right? So that's what what it means. So that's like the image of x. Image of x as a function uh, is this set, and uh, then distribution the PMF. PMF will be so. Uh, PMF will be uh, a function saying what should I call it? Like f, which f of a i will be probability that x is a i. Okay? So this f, this function is defined on this and then takes values in 0, 1. Okay, so it is defined on these numbers of the image of uh, this random variable and uh, it is defined to be the probability that x is a i. So, uh, let me uh, start with uh, Bernoulli and write down the PMF for you. So uh, let's uh, let me erase this down. And uh, before I erase this, the main example which was Bernoulli. takes 
0 and 1. So I have to define f for 0 and 1. So I will, I will say f of 0 is probably that x is 0 and that is in fact success. And f, uh, oh sorry, success was 1, right? And f of 0, which is probably that x is 0, that is failure, that's 1 minus b. So that's it. So that is the PMF. The PMF, or priority mass function, is in fact uh, for uh, f of 0 is 1 minus p, and f of 1 is p. And uh, one important thing is that uh, here we have sigma f of a i, i from 1 to n is 1. So, probability mass function is defined on the image of a, a, a random variable, and uh, that is uh, that is this. So, okay. Now, let's uh, continue with uh, other discrete random variables. CDF is a In this one and this one on your calculator, the PDF and CDF. Um, cumulative distribution function and it is defined in this way. So PMF was uh, uh, so what was PMF? PMF was defined with f of say a i or f of a say whatever that a is is a probability that x is a. But CDF is Cumulative, so we say big F of A is probably that X is less than or equal to A. Now, for those of you who are you who want deeper understanding, this is in fact P of remember X inverse of A that A we call it a singleton that is just one point in R and X inverse of that is supposed to be an event and uh, the probability of that event is in fact defined to be the value of the function at A. Now this one is, remember I wrote this one, uh, this is probability of uh, say X inverse, what is this? That's from negative infinity to a, so that's x inverse of minus infinity, comma a. Uh, how many parentheses are in there? So, so as I said, for those of you who are more interested, now I said that this specifically when we define a random variable, this uh, should be an event. And uh, 
most often we uh, write down R as uh, some kind of, uh, we give it some something which we, some structure. And that structure you know, has those as uh, special sets, so special some, some sets. So X inverse of that uh, should be an event. And the probability of that is in fact defined to be the CDF or the CDF at A or CDF of A. Anyway, you can see that this is cumulative. You see, if I have, uh, say, if, uh, if I have something like this, so if the values are like this, if the value of A is here, for example, B is here, for example, C, say, M, R, say, these are the and I might have more points up here. So if this is S, say, and X, the random variable, and this is R. So these are the values of X. So when I say, uh, let me draw a picture here. I mean a Venn diagram. So a Venn diagram. So if I just look at one point, a. and I bring it back here with x inverse, x inverse of this a. x inverse of this a will be something here. Okay, that's x inverse of a. And the probability of this p takes events into numbers between 0 and 1. Okay, so and this p of this is what gives me a function from here to 0 and 1. See, gives me a function from here to 0 and 1. Now, so that is a let me erase this. So, this way I have defined. Uh, I have defined a function f p m f. I guess this uh, is it. No, okay. That looks fine. So you want to define f on a. Use x inverse. Bring this a back. To S, this is S. That will give you a, an event here in S. Pro probability is a set function. It acts on events. It takes this event to a number between 0 and 1. This number is f of a. Okay, This number is f of a. Now, so this is PMF. Now for CDF, we do this. So that's PMF. Now for CDF, we do this. So that is X uh, less than equal to A. Less than equal to A means uh, this subset. Right? So it is this whole thing, not just one point. This whole thing comes back with x inverse. So it goes inside and gives me something. I don't know what that is, but that is an event. It's supposed to be an event. Then p takes this into a number here. So. It's like you are bringing back all these numbers. So it's x inverse of this, 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 or whatever is below a. So x inverse brings this back into s, and we define this for a, in fact. f is defined on a. f is defined on a. In a sense, you are adding all probabilities for these. You see, this is in fact 
f of say r plus f of m plus f of c plus f of b plus f of a. You see? So that is in fact the sum of PMFs. That's why it's called cumulative. Cumulative comes from this fact. Uh, you are in fact adding PMFs for values less than or equal to a. So this is so you're adding all the PMFs, the values of the PMFs at points a and below a. Okay. So let's uh, let me give you uh, some example here. some random value for this. So I said that if the sum is odd, then uh, let's uh, do something else. If the sum is a, a multiple of 3. So let's say that uh, x of a uh, sum which is a multiple of 3. So if you get a multiple of 3, let's say it is $5. x, if it's an even now, uh, no, well, uh, x of uh, multiples of 3 can be even to. So what should I say? Um, something. Uh, not a multiple of three. Then you get minus five dollars. So you pay five dollars back. Okay. So. Let's find the PMF for this. Okay, so what is the PMF for this uh, distribution? I mean, this uh, random variable. Uh, let's see. So we have to find P of x equals 5 and P of x equals negative 5. Right? We have to find this. Well, what is it? You can, uh, without uh, going back into those say more deep, say uh, deeper ideas in probability, you can think of it like this. You can say, okay, uh, when is x5? You can say something like that. When is x5? x is 5 whenever this, uh, you roll a multiple of a uh, sum of um, uh, the sum which is a multiple of 3. So let's look at. Uh, the sums that are multiples of 3 and see how many such multiples of 3 we have, right? So we need multiples of 3 but the rest are not multiples of 3. So what is uh, 
I have A and B, and uh, I need A plus B to be a multiple of 3. So, well, what do we have? What sums do we have? We have 2, 3, 4, up to 12. And which one, which ones are multiples of 3? Among them, multiples of 3. This is all of them. And multiples of 3 are 3, say 6, and 9, and 12, right? Anything else? 3, 6, 9, 12. And uh, in how many ways can I get 3? So let's write it here. In how many ways can I get 3? Uh, I have 1 plus 2 and 2 plus 1. 1, 2, 2, 1. 6. I have 1, 5, 2, 4, 3, 3. 4, 2, and uh, 5, 1, 9, uh, 1, uh, 2, 3, 3 and 6, 3 and 6, 4 and 5, 5 and 4, and 6 and 3. Right, so we uh, erase this. this thing. And 12, plus 1, 6, 6. So, how many do we have? 1, 2, uh, 5, 4, 1. So, 1, 2, 5, 4. So, that is 12, right? Uh, 4 plus 1 is 5 and 12. So, what is the priority of getting a multiple of 3, p of uh, multiple of 3? is 12 out of 36, which is 1 times. Okay, so we're done. We now have the distribution. So p of x being Five, five dollars is this, and P of X being negative five, that's you pay. Okay, so F of five is one third, F of negative five is two thirds, F of anything else is zero when X is not five or negative five. Okay. So, we found the PMF of this, and uh, well, you can uh, say, okay, as a practical uh, problem, will you play this game? No. The, the probability of losing is two-thirds. That's a lot. A lot more than winning. Uh, well, uh, usually, uh, casinos do something so they so you never win in fact so the expected value in fact is uh, in a sense positive for them and negative for you so uh, if you if you think you win you are like you're mistaken say okay anyway, so that was uh, an example of uh, Something that just uh, I wrote down on the fly, but I, I don't think a casino does anything like this because usually the the game is not like this. Okay. Let me see if uh, there's anything else. Here. I, I leave some of the material in the book to you. I can see that uh, they have uh, graphs of the CDF, discrete CDF. I 
To be honest with you, that, those, those graphs, you, you can graph that using like, mathematical or any uh, computer algebra system. Uh, uh, I don't know, maybe those who work in uh, actual business, they, uh, they enjoy those graphs. But most often, um, the PDF is important, and that PDF comes into the picture uh, when we discuss uh, uh, continuous random variables. Okay, so let me see uh, what else do we have here. Uh, 3.3 .3 is expected value, or it's interesting that you jump to expected value immediately. So 3.3. .3. Mm. Expected value denoted by. So expect that So it's like equivalent in a sense to integral. But you will see when it comes to, uh, say, continuous random variables, you will see that it is in fact uh, related to integrals. Okay, so expected value of x. What is it? It's expected win, say. So what, uh, no, you're not always playing something. So it's what you expect from X, say, something like that. So then let me go back to that problem which I, uh, I just wrote down for you and see what is the expected win. So it was, uh, I remember that X, uh, probability that X was 5. So example was uh, the game that we played. Uh, P of x is one third, okay, it was like this. And P of x negative five, which is losing five dollars was two thirds. So what is it you are expected if you uh, play too many games like this somewhere in a casino or with someone? Uh, what do you think uh, the expected win is? So what, how do you find it? Well, those of you who have some feeling for that or some intuition, you say, okay, I win out of every three games, I win one and lose two. So out of three games, I win five dollars and I lose ten dollars, right? So how do you do that? So somehow you multiply this by one and this one by two. That's it exactly. So expected value of this x is simply five times one third plus negative five times two thirds. Okay? And that's for one game you are playing, not three or four or something. That's just one game. So the expected win for one game, that's why you write one third, not one, is five thirds minus ten thirds. So that is minus five thirds. So the expected win is minus five thirds, that's in dollars, right? So that's in fact minus five thirds and in dollars. So that's in those five thirds dollars. So you're losing five thirds, minus in loss. Okay, so that's how you find uh, EX, that's exactly, the, it is the value of uh, the, that function, the PMF times the PMF itself, I mean the value times the argument of the PMF. So 
uh, we define it this way. Uh, okay, so if x is discrete, expected value of x is defined sigma over r small x, small x times f of x, where f is the PMF of the random variable RBX. Okay? You can also write it in this format. Some this might make more sense because some people just get confused what this thing is. So that is uh, now as uh, let's find the expected value for as an example. Let's start with uh, Bernoulli. So x was Bernoulli. So x takes two values, 0 and 1. Let's stick with 0 and 1, not negative 1 and 1. 0 and 1, and probably that x is 1 is p. And uh, so we call uh, f of x is p when x is 1, 1 minus p when x is 0. What was f of x? f of x is probability that x is small x. Okay? That's what uh, the way that we usually write it. And we have to uh, write something as 0 here, otherwise. Because this function is defined for every point in R, not just those two points. So that's a function defined in R. And we have to give uh, the value of the function at other points in R, not just two points, 0 and 1. Okay, so if I graph this function, if I graph this function, uh, it is uh, 0 and 1, right? 0 and 1 at, and let's say this is 1 here, uh, no, this should be then. Okay, so at 1 it is p, somewhere here, right? at 0 it is somewhere here, this and this, and at the other point it is basically 0. So it has value here and here, and uh, Everywhere else it is zero. And the zero is in fact for the rest. So it is a discrete function defined only for zero and one. Okay, so this is like p and this is one minus p. Okay. And now I want to find uh, the Expected winning, say. If that is like winning something. So it's like a winning one dollar and losing nothing, say. Something like that. So uh, expected value of this x, remember that this x, fx over x. So x can be one and fx is p, x is 0, fx is 1 minus p. So it's basically p. So expected value of x is simply p. Uh, it's positive, right? So if 
you play a game that if you win, you get one dollar saying, and if you lose, nothing happens. Right? If, there, if there's some stupid game like that, that you win one dollar or you lose nothing, then the expected win is just P, if you have defined a probability for win. So if the probability for win is P, it's intuitively, intuitively it makes sense, right? Intuitively it makes sense that if the probability of win is P and you win one dollar, say, if you win, uh, if you get one dollar if you win and you lose nothing if you lose, so you don't get it. Uh, the, pro the, pro the expected win here, we can say expected win, is uh, uh, just P. And the formula also tells me that it is P. So, that is uh, for Bernoulli and uh, uh, well, let me see if there are other nice examples here. Now, I can see that uh, uh, the Bernoulli, uh, this fx is written uh, in a much nicer way, which I didn't expect the book to have written it like this, but that's okay. So, uh, uh, let, let me write it like that for you, because I see the book. So, if x is Bernoulli p, and x takes two values, this is p of x equal 1 is p, and p of x equals 0 is 1 minus p, and this is f of 1, and this is f of 0. Then, uh, is there a better way to write it? Yes, there is, in fact, f of, uh, say, x is, uh, p to the power x times 1 minus p or 1 minus x. Right? That is another way to write down fx, and you can see what happens here. So if p is, uh, I mean, if x is 1, that is p to the power 1, which is uh, P, and this is uh, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus p to the power 0 is 1. And when x is 0, p to the power 0 is 1, and 1 minus p to the power 1 is 1 minus p. But this uh, is not uh, totally, I mean, it's not correct because it doesn't say what happens if x is uh, not 0 and 1. But uh, it, uh, practically speaking, it's, it's good to write it like this, but we have to add uh, an indicator function here, the indicator function of 0 and 1, which means if it is not 0 and 1, it's 0. So an indicator function should be added here, which I am not going to add. Let me see if the book mentions that. Uh, oh, yeah, the book in fact says that. So, yeah, so it says this. When x is 0 and 1, it is 0 otherwise. Yeah, so that, that's okay. Or you can write it like this, f of x. This is more advanced. This not this. This is converting. Times the indicator function of 0, 1. Okay, so that was uh, the lecture for today, and uh, see you next time.